Hey, what's going on phone dogs? Bo HD here and over the past 12 months, we have tested out many different smartphones, some that cost over $1,000 and others that cost less than $100. With the year coming to an end, we thought we would uh, take a trip down memory lane and share with you some of our favorite smartphones that we have personally reviewed on the channel. There are a number of devices that we did not get time to cover, unfortunately, so do keep that in mind in case we don't cover a device in this video. Um, but please let us know what your favorite devices are of the year in a comment down below. So in March, Samsung launched their flagship Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus smartphones, giving us a glimpse at what 2018 had in store for ultra premium smartphones. Not only were these some of the first devices to launch with the Snapdragon 845 chipset, but they both featured a dual aperture camera. They have a set of very tiny aperture blades that can move to change the amount of incoming light. There's an f1.5 aperture and f2.4 aperture that can be used depending on the lighting conditions. The f1.5 aperture, for example, excels in low light and should be able to lighten or brighten up your images. What we especially like about these devices is that they still keep their headphone jacks, which is super rare these days. A couple months later, we got to take a look at the LG G7 Think or Thin Q, which is what LG is pushing. Uh, it's LG's first flagship smartphone to feature a notch. It has a number of upgraded specifications in the performance department and the camera department. Uh, the wide angled camera sensor made a return, which we absolutely love. There's even a headphone jack with a quad DAC for those audiophiles out there. The OnePlus 6 came in hot, overshadowing many of the other devices to launch before it, thanks to its crazy spec to price ratio. You got a new design with a much larger notched AMOLED display, a Snapdragon 845 CPU with up to eight gigabytes of RAM, and that beautifully pure Android software. It's not stock Android, but it's darn close. The OnePlus 6 didn't last long though, as OnePlus launched the 6T a few months later, adding an in-display fingerprint scanner, an even larger display, and larger 3700 milliamp hour battery. If I had to pick the best smartphone of the year, it might be the OnePlus 6T. Now we can't forget about the Galaxy Note 9, which received a number of spec upgrades, including a larger 4000 milliamp hour battery. The Note 9 is the most feature packed smartphone of 2018. Now, 2018 was an S model iPhone year. So Apple released the iPhone XS, but they changed things up a little bit by releasing a larger XS Max smartphone and a more budget-friendly iPhone XR. The XS Max is a dream come true for those wanting an excessively large iPhone X as it features a huge 6.5 inch display that looks absolutely stunning. Meanwhile, the iPhone XS is basically an iPhone X with updated specifications and some new features, while the iPhone XR is basically a chunkier iPhone XS with only one camera sensor, a slightly worse display, and no 3D touch technology. Since it shaves off a few hundred bucks and you have many more colors to choose from, we believe the iPhone XR is the best iPhone of 2018 for most people. Towards the end of the year, we saw the LG V40 Thin Q, which is basically an LG V7 Thin Q, but with a total of five camera sensors and up to six gigabytes of RAM, all in a pretty similar build. Google also launched a couple smartphones of their own, the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL. The 3 XL features a massive notch that has turned off a lot of people, while the Pixel 3 is notchless, but with considerably thinner bezels than the Pixel 2. We actually prefer this device over the larger XL, thanks to its superior one-handed usability and uh, no massive notch. While the Pixel 2's camera still manages to compete well against the 2018 flagship smartphones we have, the Pixel 3 improves upon it, making it the best all-around mobile camera sensor on the market, in our opinion. Now, I do wanna give a shout out to BlackBerry for continuing to release smartphones with QWERTY keyboards I actually spent 30 days with the Key 2 and I documented my experience with the handset. If you wanna see it, I'll place a link in the description. Also, I've been using the Huawei Mate 20 for the past month and a half or so, and I actually really like it. The software is a little bit buggy and could definitely use some more refinement, but the hardware is great and I really enjoy the Leica cameras and the, the speed of the device. I'll work on producing a full review of it soon. 
With that last one, those are our favorite devices we had the pleasure of reviewing during 2018. Now, there are so many other smartphones that we did not mention and we were not able to get our hands on, uh, many of which were in other markets, uh, many Chinese devices and so on. Please let us know what device is your favorite in a comment down below. I would love to hear your reasoning. Uh, which device should uh, we check out next, maybe in 2019? If you enjoyed this video and are excited for what 2019 brings, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. As always, I'm Bo HD from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.